cool. Yes, there is a another a friend joining us for this nice. <laughs> conversation. What but um, what? What's your dog's name? Oh, his name is Zenko. Zenko, Zenko. that is a yes. fun name. He looks like a little fox and a baked potato mixed together. Zenko, oh, what's up? <laughs> I, I know he he wants to conduct the interview. Um, no, but... that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> if Zenko um, but, started talking right now, I'd be just. I would pee. I would just be like, "All right, but, I guess it's that's it." <laughs> um, yeah. Now I'm expecting him just to open his little mouth and start talking. Come on, man, but... step up. <laughs> yeah, come on, dude. This is amazing. Um, but my first question is for both of you. But I guess we'll start with Micah. Is what was it like? You know, this movie is mostly just the two of you in the woods, and so what was it like developing your characters and developing your characters' relationships together? Oh, it was <laughs> it was an absolute blast. Um, it was nice because we, you know, we had some some time before, a little bit of time before for rehearsals and just like hanging out and and spending some time together also I feel like the first couple days what we shot without giving stuff away it's like later on in the movie like pretty intense we had to like go into the ocean we were freezing and I feel like that just kind of immediately bonds people because you're both going through something that is uh challenging and um and uh yeah I mean I think you know we just we we you know Jake's an amazing actor and it was so awesome to work opposite him and we just you know I had some fun while while doing it cool and Jake what about you uh yeah that first day you know like not only are you in these like kind of the hardest circumstances of the shoot you're like I'm in a wetsuit under a thing and then they're we can only shoot here one day so in between being in the water they're watching playback to make sure they got what they need which in the grand scheme you're like that's great because if we don't get it we don't have it in the movie but then you go like this is 45 minutes between being in the water and out of the water you know that's like day two you go like great there's a little bit of bonding going on here with a shared experience but also again without like trying to give a thing away it's like the the i think the very first scene was a uh dan and bobby are so sweet and so like such wonderful directors but they also were like here's the deal man in post there's going to be a thing on that beach and this is what it's going to look like and the first thing we're going to shoot is you talking to her about it so uh just imagine if you can you know like that was like our intro into it and not that that's like harrowing it's more that you have to go like hey man we're gonna have to buddy up on this you know like we're gonna have to the only way this thing works is if you and i create this together and are cool together and collaborate and build a thing and trust to go like was that a terrible take (laughs) you know and someone will go like that seemed okay you're like "Ah, (laughs) you know like (laughs) damn it that that sort of like getting you know thrown to the wolves early is kind of nice because if if you luck out and get to work with Micah she's like prepared and chill and fun and talented and you go like oh great we're gonna be okay we're gonna be all right this this whole way through like it's cool you know um so I feel like that that and also you know I mean just to ramble on um some of the crew lived there in, in Portland, but for the most part, like we were out of towners coming to Portland uh, and, and the surrounding area. And so we were all getting to like explore and discover this rad city together. Rad is like a term from the nineties. Uh, when I was a kid, you know, we'd say rad, like that's cool. Like, I still say rad. I will never stop saying rad. Okay, good. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was, it was killer. Those are other ones, you know, throwback terms you guys might not know about. Um, but we all got to like kind of pal around and and like bond as a creative group, you know, outside just like the two of us, but being like, oh, we all, Dan Kagan, the producer and Matt, the DP, and you know, it's like, we'd all go out to dinner, all go to like a bar, go hang, whatever. And and that I felt like is was, was similar. Like you get this summer camp thing where you go like, we're in this, you know? Cool. 
That's awesome. And so, Micah, you're obviously have a lot of roles in the horror genre. Um, Indeed. Uh, what? Indeed. <laughs> Do you like horror movies yourself? Like, are you a horror movie person? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I grew up like absolutely obsessed. Really? With the genre. I would. I would uh, sneak over to my watch. We'd rent like you know three horror movies and stay up all night and. Um, couldn't sleep I'd scare the absolute shit out of myself but it was so fun you know that's that's what's so fun about horror movies is it's like such an intense experience um so yes to answer your question yes what was the first horror movie you ever saw do you remember oh gosh probably Nightmare on Elm Street which is so terrifying because the movie just makes you not want to sleep because once you fall asleep, then it all goes it's over. <laughs> it's done. You're going to die. So that one was rough, but it was, yeah, oh, I loved it. <laughs> loved it. How old were you? Do you remember? Oh man, I would have been in, gosh, probably like 11, 10, 11. Oh right? boy. That's when I saw it too. Yeah. Yeah. It's rough. It's tough. It's tough. Yeah. It My it mom is. was upset that I had seen that. Anyway. <laughs> That was great though. Mm-hmm. And so what, like, obviously you're a genre fan, but what kind of keeps bringing you back to working in the genre? What do you love so much about working and in front of the camera and horror? Yeah. I, I mean, I think, you know, I was really lucky to be part of a movie called It Follows that came out at the same time as a couple other horror movies that I think are incredible. Baba Duke and The Witch. Um, we, I think we all kind of went the same festival circuit with those three yeah. movies. And um, and I think those films sort of started the shift in the the horror genre of like really um, elevating it, and it's not just about you know these hot half naked girls covered in blood running for their lives. <clears throat> There's a bit more depth to it all, and and so. And yeah, I think really cool um, filmmakers are, are making movies in this genre. And so like, I don't know, it's not like a plan. Uh, yeah. Not at all. It's just like I'm when I'm sent these scripts with like really cool directors and like awesome roles. It's like, hell yeah, I want to do it. And they, you know, they turned out all right. So I'm lucky. Yeah. And Jake, are you a horror movie person? I really uh, was not, but I think mostly because I uh, was like too scared as a kid, you know, like not because I was like, I'm above it. I'm sure that's how I acted, but because I was like, I will not sleep ever. This will be the (laughs) end of me. Like, I'll just, I got enough things I'm worried about. I don't need to, I don't want to pile on more things to worry about. Um, yeah, I yes, I remember being at birthday parties and like people putting on scary movies and me being like, "Why don't we do something else? Why? why even we, that kid? Why are we even Truth or Dare? Do you guys want to like? Why are we even watching stuff? Let's go outside. This is crazy." I remember as a little little kid seeing the thriller video for the first time. Oh, it was like around Halloween, and it was like a whatever music video when those existed, kind of thing. And I was like terrified my cousin was like babysitting me for the afternoon and he was like, this is a classic. You should watch it. And I was like, never again, you know, and that's eight minutes long, (laughs) you know, um, the shining is probably the closest thing. And that's kind of a genre, but that's uh, its own. Its own thing. Kubrick. It's like, how do you. Terrifying thing. (laughs) Yeah. It's just amazing. I love to see the behind the, you ever seen the behind the scenes stuff of them oh, making so the cool. It's yeah. so cool. If you watch a documentary too, um, the one about like all the weird theories behind like all of the conspiracy yes. theories behind it. Why? And that some of the theories don't play out. Like there's one where he's like, mean? like there's one where they go like the so guy's like. Totally off veering on this interview, but. I love it. He <laughs> says like, if you look in the clouds, when they pan by the hotel, you can see Kubrick has like put his face, his beard into the, and as he's saying it, they're panning across the sky and you're like, that's not true. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not, like it's not. also the story of how like people desperately want there to be meaning. More, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so yeah, there's this mix of going like, oh, I'm sure that Kubrick put all of those like 
the cans facing out with the Native American held like the yep. silhouette on it to be like, there's blood on your hands. Native people were pushed off these lands to put your luxury hotel here. Like, you know, that that is an intentional message. But then there's others like, you'll notice that the door is ajar and they pan by and it's not. And you're like, oh, you're searching for a thing. Like that's as much part of the culture surrounding this film as not is people like yeah. wanting it to mean something. Yeah. Well, I have to wrap, but this was awesome to talk about The Shining and Conspiracy Theory. So cool. Thank you both so much for chatting with me today.